Good morning! Welcome to Chapel of the Air. My name is Pastor Mel McGinnis. I pastor the Kind Tone Congregational Church. Atheism. You've heard it. You know it's on the rise? It's on the rise here in America. It's on the rise in Europe. It has been more agreeable to people in our day and time. We're going to talk about that subject today. And with me is Pastor Jeff Short. He's been a pastor for over 20 years, leading churches in Illinois, Colorado, Nevada, New York, and Michigan. He holds degrees from Wheaton College and Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in philosophy and divinity. He's also earned a doctorate from Fuller Theological Seminary. And he's written a couple of books, including Knowing God's Will for Your Life and The Interactive Church. And Jeff's specialty is thinking at the crossroads of culture and church. His most recent project has been putting together the last 10 years weekly sermon messages into print, including book-length publications such as Romans and Galatians, the Book of Acts, and other uh, pertinent questions for the church to be asking. Jeff, welcome to Chapel of the Air. Well, it's good to be here. It's be good to be here to discuss with you this uh, topic because it's so big in the news all the time. And uh, it's great to get together and chit-chat on it. Yeah, and we will be teaming up on June the 4th at Prendergast Library, 630, to put on a presentation in response to the new atheists which have made their mark here in our society. We want to give that Christian worldview to those in the world directly attacking Christianity through their anti-theistic or atheistic beliefs. And Jeff, what gets you interested in such a topic as this? Well, as a pastor, uh, we know that we run into people all the time that while they're not technically atheists, they don't actually come out and say, I'm an atheist they give a lot of the atheist reasoning and they give a lot of the re uh, arguments uh, against faith that the atheists give. And so you're running into, I would call practical atheism all the time. It's just everywhere. It's in education, it's in government, it's in broadcasting, the media, science, I mean you name it, atheism is there. It's not called atheism, but it is basically, when it all boils down to a practical atheism. So um, the topic is really relevant. Um, you don't run into a lot of the hardcore uh, atheists like Christopher Hitchens, like Richard Dawkins, those kind. You don't run into them every day. Once in a while you do. But most of the time you just run into this kind of soft atheism that um, is pretty much atheism, only it's not got the hard outer shell on it. So it's real subtle. It's very sense. subtle, very subtle. And how would you describe some of those subtleties? In other words, how does this thinking creep into people's minds, and how do they act as practical atheists? Well, atheism, the strict definition of atheism is a disbelief in God, the existence of God. Uh, but like I said, you know, few, very few people uh, go around saying, hey, I'm an atheist, I disbelieve in God. They don't do that. Most of the people that we run into that I know um, are people that actually say, yeah, there's a God or there might be a God, there, there could be a God, but they live their lives um, as if there is no God. Um, they have basically um, little or no connection with God the true God. Um, and so you see, for example, in their lives, very little prayer. Uh, there might be like meditation, reflection. You know, Buddhists can reflect and meditate, but they're technically speaking atheists. But you see uh, little or no prayer in a person's life. You see little or no uh, reading and studying and thinking about the Bible in their lives. And this is all over um, the media on television and movies. For example, one of the most frustrating things about living in the Western culture today is when you go to the movies and you see uh, problems and crises develop in the movies, in the plot line, and the people don't 
relate or turn to God for their answers. And uh, one of the biggest uh, examples went about 15 years ago or so, there was a movie called The Blair Witch Project, and some kids were out in the middle of the woods, and they were camping, and all of a sudden they started encountering what they um, felt or thought was a witch. And they didn't turn to God, they didn't pray, they didn't do anything that a normal Christian would do. And that's what you get with practical atheism. It's a total disregard or neglect for connection with God. And so their lives are lived basically uh, empty of God. As if God does not exist. And you mention education, our current government-run school system. That whole system is run basically without any connection whatsoever to God. That's practical atheism in education all day long. Every day of the week, the kids go into an environment that is practically atheism. Now, they may learn about Christianity, they may learn about other religions, but it's merely academic. There's no connection to the subject matter being related to or sourced in God above. In a real way, in a relevant, practical way, there's no relationship with God Almighty. The way there was, say, even just 50 years ago. I mean, I have reached the 50-year-old mark in my life. And just during my time on earth, I can look back just 20 years ago and 30 years ago, and there has been a huge shift in the public schools. I remember back when I was in high school, we took a course in the Bible in the public school, and we learned about the books of the Bible and all kinds of things. Um, and most of the discussion in that class w was taking it seriously. The teacher was not an atheist. The teacher was not a non-believer. The teacher was a person that believed in God. And so it was almost like Sunday school in the public school. That was 30 years ago. Today, you probably wouldn't get that. You would get the practical atheism. So you, I've seen just in the last few decades the shift, but it's been occurring. It's been happening for over 50 years now. Yeah, and it's like they don't teach atheism directly. It's all indirect. And there's other philosophies woven in there that though they are not taught directly, mm -hmm. they are coming through in between the lines, such as I think the whole perspective in science in high school, junior high, is naturalism. Mm -hmm. Everything can be explained without God. Only natural forces brought things into existence. Exactly. That's the assumption of yep. modern science. And as a assumption for investigation, that's not a bad thing. I mean, you want to encourage uh, scientists to continue to pursue uh, uh, rational, uh, natural reasons, if at all possible. But the whole philosophical assumption that there are no miracles, that goes beyond the investigative assumption. That takes it into the realm of philosophy and religion. And you do see that actually in the high schools, the public high schools. Um, I was at a used book sale uh, a couple years ago and I picked up a book by Richard Dawkins who is one of the main uh, atheist proponents today and stamped on the inside cover was the um, emblem for Jamestown High School. So here was a Jamestown High School assigned book to a student that basically um, taught there is no God. The only thing that exists is matter in motion. And so it's not just a subtle message the kids are getting. Sometimes they're getting the full front atheism in their face. You mentioned a name, Richard Dawkins, and there's this term being bannered about new atheists. Could you describe a little more uh, individuals in that camp uh, in today's world? The new atheism... Uh, I think the new atheists, that's a term or phrase that was given to maybe three or four or five guys who started uh, acting very uncharacteristic uh, in the, among atheists because normally an atheist is someone who is an atheist but keeps, them, keeps to themselves, um, will give an opinion when asked but isn't actively promoting it. These guys um, are all almost evangelists, 
And that's the real irony. They act like they've got good news. And when you start looking at what they actually say, and these are fellows like uh, Richard Dawkins, a British scientist, um, the late Christopher Hitchens, a journalist. Um, you have a fellow named Sam Harris. I think he's a PhD in some scientific field. And then you have Daniel Dennett, who is also, I think he's a biologist. I'm not sure. He, he might be a, a philosopher. Um, but they all, they don't just hold to atheism, they promote it. They, they evangelize, if you will. They get excited about it, as if there's something excited to get about atheism. There is nothing to get excited about in atheism. Um, it basically teaches that there is no point or purpose to life, that all life and all existence is meaningless. That's not good news. Um, it also teaches there are no absolute moral standards for right or wrong. So uh, someone like an Adolf Hitler and a Mother Teresa, as far as an atheist, when you get right down to it, there is no quantitative or qualitative difference between the two. Um, it's just a difference of opinion uh, because there's no ultimate standard. And then there is no, and what I find shocking but is true is that if you look at these guys' atheism, what it boils down to is they don't even believe that reason and free will exist because if you believe that everything is governed by natural law then even the thoughts and the molecules in our brain and our thinking they're all determined also by nature so when you boil it all down there is nothing good about atheism there's no good news in it so these guys are evangelists but for what that's the big question right and they to be consistent, have to dismiss the category of truth. Exactly. Truth is something, if you're going to be consistent as an atheist, you cannot appeal to. Because like you say, in a sense, we're just programmed. That's if what indeed, you would have to say. Yeah. If you were a consistent atheist, uh, truth would be, uh, persuading would be trying to get someone to have a similar brain state. Uh, trying to get their molecules lined up with your molecules in the in the sense of but see that ultimately can't work either because if a person's been programmed through nature and through biology and through conditioning to believe a certain way all your uh, persuading won't help anyway so there is contradiction right at the core of the atheist philosophy that the reason why reason and free will can exist is because there's a God who exists outside of nature, stands above nature, is not a part of the cause and effect process. And so also humans who are made in the image of God, we stand above nature. We are not determined by nature itself because we're made in the image of God, so we can stand above. And reason has meaning, free will has meaning, but under atheism, all those things don't exist. Yes, and it's interesting as we read the scripture how much Christ appeals to the truth. When he was standing before Pilate, he said, I have come to testify to the truth. And he himself said, I am the truth. Uh, when we read him uh, conversing with the Jews, uh, he said, the truth shall set you free. And isn't it interesting when we go to these uh, Christian colleges in our past, those Ivy League schools, I can't help but think of Ravi Zacharias, who was a tremendous Christian apologist, how he remarked when he went to Harvard and saw, uh, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, ripped entirely from its context. And I uh, think we you know, see whatever appeals there are to truth, it just does not go back to the Bible. No, and it doesn't go back to any transcendent mm -hmm. source. Um, I just wrote an article for the Post Journal, I hope they put it in there, but um, it's on the Robert Jackson Center, and Judge John Roberts just spoke there, and um, they were honoring Robert Jackson for his efforts in the war tribunal after World War II. And one of the things that came out of that tribunal is the need, there needed to be a transcendent truth that was transcendent over all particular cultures. Because if you don't have a transcendent truth that's beyond, above and, and over humanity, then you just get Western nations on the Allied side saying that Germany was wrong. 
in other words, their opinion versus Germans' opinion. And the Allied forces won, so they just put their power over Germany and imposed values on them. That's all you can say if you don't have a transcendent value. And the Germans could say, well, wait a minute, you're coming into our culture, you're trying to impose your values on us. This is our value system. Now, if you have a transcendent source like God, then you say, it doesn't matter what your particular culture says, it doesn't matter what our particular culture says at a given time, there is a transcendent sort of source of truth, and that's God. And he says what you did was wrong in killing six million Jewish people. That's wrong, according to the transcendent source of values, God. And so there's a basis for international law. But if there is no transcendent God and there's no transcendent source of values, there really is no basis for an international tribunal, international justice. It's just one culture or many cultures um, conflicting with others. It just boils down to might makes right. Power games. Yeah. Power. Right, right. Again, I invite you to come Tuesday night to the Jamestown Prendergrass Library. That's Tuesday night, June the 4th, 6.30 p.m. We'll be addressing this topic of the Christian worldview's response to the new atheism that has begun to make strong inroads into our society today. And uh, we need to be, as Christians, informed so that we can offer that apologetic to a world that's drifting farther and farther away from transcendent truth, God, and the Scripture. Jeff, you have a quote in front of you. I believe it's from Aldous Huxley. And I was wondering, how does that tie in to our discussion today? Well, when you look at the new atheists or hear them or read their books, there is a lot of emotionalism and a lot of ranting and raving, um, not actually a straightforward argument against God. It's more of an emo emotional response against belief in God. And I found a quote by a famous uh, atheist of a past generation, Aldous Huxley, and it really summarizes the whole point of the new atheists, where they start from at this emotional gut level. And here's what Aldous Huxley said. He said, and I quote, I had motive for not wanting the world to have meaning, consequently assumed that it had none, and was able without any difficulty to find satisfying reasons for this assumption. The philosopher who finds no meaning in the world is not concerned exclusively with a problem in pure metaphysics. He is also concerned to prove that there is no valid reason why he personally should not do as he wants to do, or why his friends should not seize political power or, and govern in the way they find most advantageous for themselves. That pretty much sums it up. It boils it down to this. According to Huxley, his primary motive for being an atheist was not intellectual. Mm -hmm. His primary reason for not believing in God was not because he concluded that through vigorous and rigorous study and logic. His primary motivation for being an atheist was he didn't want any external authority telling him what to do. And so with his atheism, he could feel good about doing anything he wanted to do. And I appreciate that uh, forthrightness. Uh, now, there would be atheists out there who would say, but I don't agree with what he said. I think we should be moral people. I think we should strive to achieve that which is good. But even as they say that, and even as there are good atheists out there, I think the question becomes for them to be consistent, why? Why be good? Uh, and with uh, these kinds of things, it takes a lot of uh, thought to be able to uh, converse with individuals we find who are on the exact opposite page, but I think they'll see it's the Christians that have re reason. It's the Christians that have logic. It's the Christians that have coherence to their argument. It's the Christian that makes sense of origin, Meaning, morality, and destiny. 
Exactly. If you think it through and you go all the way back and back and back and back, um, you either s start with this super intelligent, uh, loving, kind mind, the mind of God, or you start with big bang collisions, uh, explosions, gases, uh, light flashing, impersonal natural forces, and purposeless, meaningless life. I mean, if that is all there is, like Peggy Lee used to sing, mm -hmm. is that all there is? Well, to an atheist, to the new atheist, yeah, that's all there is. All there is is a natural explosion that happened a long, long time ago. Nobody knows why. And voila, here we are. And where are we going? Well, they don't know. Uh, where do we come from? They don't know. What's the purpose of everything? There is no purpose. It's just there. You know, things are bouncing around, exploding, will be gone in millions of years. Uh, the universe will be dead and, and, and burned out in billions of years. What's the purpose of all that? They don't know. There's no answer. Now, Christianity and Judaism and the monotheistic basis for God, if you start with God and you work your way forward, then everything makes sense. You have a mind who creates. So there's a purpose for all the creation. You have values because in the mind of God, there is definitely a right and a wrong. And so then you have a basis for civil morality and ethics. And so you just work it all the way out and you realize it makes sense. It makes sense. You know, uh, God, starting with God makes a lot more sense than starting with no God. Right. When you think it through, okay, where did logic come from? Did it come from primordial soup? Uh, where did reason come from? Did it come from gas? Uh, or does reason come from a reasonable being, a supreme uh, individual who has all knowledge? It just makes more sense to uh, view it from that perspective than it is to uh, think that all these uh, interesting things when it comes to thought, knowledge, and uh, science coming from a mere explosion. Um, right, and that's very questionable whether the whole scientific enterprise, that the modern scientific enterprise that we understand it, would have come from uh, pure atheism, because uh, what's the point? Mm -hmm. What's the point of figuring it out? What's the point of investigation? Mm -hmm. um, if it all comes down to nothing, like Dave Matthews sings in one of his songs, if it all comes down to nothing, you know, eat, drink, and be merry. Don't worry about science. Don't worry about discovery. Don't, you know, put yourself, exert yourself to try to, uh, you know, peer into the unknown because it doesn't matter. But with Christianity, there's all kinds of things that matter, and everything is filled with meaning and purpose. And so most of the early, if not overwhelmingly, number of early scientists were all Christian. Uh, and that they had the impulse for discovering what they believe uh, they would say, we're, we're seeking to find out the mind of God. And so it all makes sense with God. Without God, nothing makes sense. Friends, when uh, we do this presentation on Tuesday night, June the 4th at 6.30 at Jamestown Prendergast Library, we hope to have some video clips of individuals in the United States who are outstanding spokesmen for the Christian faith. I think of one, uh, Robbie Zacharias, and as I understand it, you uh, had contact with another, and I hope he'll be there by way of video clip, uh, William Lane Craig. William Lane Craig is another uh, great spokesman for Christian thinking. Um, you have all, I mean, there's just so many of them. Yeah, and uh, we can't bring them all there on Tuesday night, but you will get their perspective as they interact or respond to the new atheists that we mentioned here today. But, you know, as the Bible says, a fool believes that there is no God. Only the fool says there is no God. Psalm 14. Uh, think of what Jesus says. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. How much more foolish can man get than to start at the point in the belief that there is no 
God. And uh, we want to affirm right from the start, as the Bible does, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible makes it very clear to us the reason for origin, the point of purpose in life, the aspects of absolutes when it comes to morality, and there is a destiny. We're not simply going to vanish or go out of existence. There is a heaven. There is a hell. Be prepared. Be prepared as the Bible says. Repent and believe the good news. Jeff, I want to thank you for being here today. really appreciate this interchange and interaction. I hope we're going to do more of this as the time, uh, weeks, and months go forward. And uh, next week, Rick Ledoux will be with you here on Chapel of the Air.